Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishNetwork.com, and today we're going to be talking about bluegill baits. Now, you probably know what a bluegill is. It's a panfish. It's small. It's easy to catch. It's great for kids. It's great for the family. It's great for yourself if you're very limited in time and you want to get a fish in your hand, a fish in your rod, to pull it a line, and a nice smell of fish on your hand. And I have a way that you can do that every day. But that's besides the point, and we'll talk about that later. First of all, what's a great bluegill bait? Now, today we're going to be talking about things that are alive or used to be alive, i.e. live bait fishing. And when it pertains to that, the number one undisputed champion is the worm. Now, there is more than one worm, and you're probably wondering, huh, are they all created the same? Is the one in my backyard just as good as the one that's in the fishing shop, or vice versa? Well, I'll plainly say, for bluegills, it doesn't really matter much. It's okay. But, if you're wondering about the different types, sure. Let's go through uh, just a couple of them that you may be wondering about. One, the European uh, worm is obviously European. You can find it a lot in Canada, and more specifically, it's a gigantic worm. I'm talking, I think they can go past a foot, and it is really thick and fat. So for bluegill purposes, you only need something about a half inch long. You're using size, I think, eight to size 12 snell hooks, or um, if you're using bait, fly bait, that's the size of the hook, and pretty much a half inch section of that worm is going to suffice. So that one single worm is going to last a long time. And the price disparity between that worm and another worm can be high. Uh, there are others that cost a lot more, but I think for cost effectiveness and juiciness and amount of uh, meat, <laughs> it's a great option if you have it available to you. If you don't have it available to you, it actually is available to purchase online. Another one, which has been very popular over the years, even when I was a young child, is the night crawler. It did cost a little bit more than the regular earthworm, which is the thing outside crawling through your yard and probably through your garden or whatever else you got out there. And hey, on a nice wet day, you can come out and just grab those bad boys right off the ground because they're drowning down there in the, in the, after the rainstorm and there's free pickings. Get some fresh dirt, throw them in a nice little container that has some holes in them for them to breathe a little bit, or doesn't need a, a big hole, just a tiny little pinprick. Slam it, sh that, uh, that stuff shut it, and throw it in the refrigerator. You're good. Earthworms. But for night clubs, it costs a little bit more, and their effectiveness for bluegills really isn't much different. I think they're more effective. I believe they're more effective for bass. Those are the types of worms that bass will actually try to look for during nighttime. And that's when they're out. So when they come into contact with that particular worm at night, they'll know that they're getting the good stuff. Now, if something weird and foreign like comes around, they'll probably eat it anyway. They're hungry. They're starving. So in essence, for fishing, doesn't really matter. There are a couple other types. One is a trout worm. It's a shorter type of worm. Easier for children to like, you know, get the start of uh, actually putting the bait on the hook. And it's easier to deal with. You usually get more in the container when you purchase it from a, a fishing shop, a fishing store, or a tackle shop, whatever you want to call it. And you don't have to worry about cutting it and blood and guts going everywhere. You can just, boom, throw the whole worm on the hook and you're done. No no fuss. And I did try this out on a previous video, I believe, and it was very effective for time savings and for the amount of things I had to bring with me. And I beforehand never heard of a trout worm, but now I see that it does have a use for one, easy to apply, there's no mess, there's no smell, and they last a long time maybe even longer than a regular earthworm in the refrigerator. I think I tracked them at, it was almost four months, and they barely lost any size. Unlike the earthworm just shrinks rapidly. 
There are also red worms, which I normally wouldn't even mention, but the fact that you can use them for composting a lot and people actually farm them in mass, so you can get a lot of them for a very cheap price. If you have one of those little personal composting kits that have the trays where I'm not exactly sure how it works, but there's a tray with your compost, a tray with the dirt, a tray with the worms, and a tray with like that sand stuff they need to eat so they can break down all your food. And then in the end, you have a well-fed worm. It's extremely happy. It's alive and it's active and you can use it immediately for fishing. And then they're in there mating and they're making more worms for you to use for free. So I'll probably have another video talking more specifically about that process of having a never ending source of worms. I have to do a little bit more experimenting myself. I'm still on that journey of learning how I can do that because worms, you know, they cost money and who wants to spend more money than they have to? Not me. So the next thing other than worms to use that's very good and it's a great bluegill bait is a cricket. They're outside, they're chirping, they're rubbing their legs together. They may be annoying you, keeping you awake, or maybe they actually pacify you and put you to sleep. Whatever it is, if you want to go out there and chase them, be my guest. But more likely you're going to go to a tackle shop and grab a lot of them. And if you're a really good one, you can poke those same hooks through and use them as bait as well. They're a great natural bait. They're not going to fuss or even think about whether this is real. They'll know immediately and you will get a bluegill on there or something else. Pumpkin seed, bream, some other type of sunfish, maybe even a crappie or a bass. Who knows? Another great thing, just like that, is a grasshopper. You can buy those in bulk as well as the crickets online or on a tackle shop or at a tackle shop. Um, and a funny thing here is a <laughs> old story where I used to do competitions with my friend back at a, a lake we used to live at and my bait of, of choice was <laughs> bologna. Why? Well, it was less than a dollar for like a 12 pack of bologna at the local store. I was in, I don't know, middle school, therefore cutting the grass and washing the car is not cutting it for night crawlers to have fun on a weekend or any other day. So I had to be inventive. I figured out, hey, what do they love and will eat with no questions and actually stays on the hook? Now, dough balls are popular too, you know, mushing the pieces of, of bread together. It's kind of like making them like bread pudding, you know, it gets wet and soggy. But when you put it on a hook, you know, it's kind of like when you're doing carp fishing. They, they, the panfish are actually big nibblers, so that dough ball is going to fall right off. You're going to have to do it again and put it on there. But no, psh, forget that. Go with the baloney. Tiny little, even a, a quarter inch piece. Hook it on there. Oh, man. They're going to come at it. They're going to sniff it, or it looks like they're going to sniff it, and psh, they suck it up, and psh, you got a fish. I believe that single day, I did lose competition. I got over 150 fish, and I think my friend got over 200. Can't remember what he was using. Definitely wasn't bologna though, but some other type of bait. I think he had worms. So you know, worms win that one. Why? <laughs> because they're the undisputed champion. But I got pretty close with bologna, and you can use other things as well that are meat products or maybe not meat products. A hot dog, you know, that's cheap and affordable. That works. I've tried it out. That outer um, casing works well for keeping the bait on. If you just hook the inside of it, it's going to fall apart. So you need a piece of the casing attached. So nice little slices of the hot dog, razor thin, work great. And they also hide the hook, so it becomes almost uh, wheatless. Think about it. And there's, you know, corn and uh, you should just try things in your house that are cheap and that stay on the hook. You'll be surprised what they'll eat. So there's also some other things which you may have access to or not have access to. One is grass shrimp. Grass shrimp are known for actually eating bluegill eggs, so they're very aggressive against them during their spawning period. The same way bass are aggressive to bluegills when they come near 
there's funny bits. Everything's trying to eat another. It's like that old adage where the, the small fish eats the smaller fish, and then the bigger fish eats that one, and the bigger fish, and then the bigger fish. It just keeps going until, I guess, there's a human head that comes around and gets the last fish. The big tuna. <laughs> uh, yes, and there's also uh, grubs, which you can also dig up in your local area. Uh, even in your yard. They're usually under something moist. You don't have to go too far down, six inches, maybe a foot. Somewhere fertile, like at the outside of a garden or the inside of a garden. The bugs will like plant their eggs down there and the grubs will will start hatching. And there's those little white or uh, with the ridges shaped creatures that look disgusting. Well, they're tasty to fish. And if you can get enough of them, great. But once again, I advise that you go to the store and buy them from your local taco shop or go online and get them delivered to your door. Those things can happen now. We have eBay, we have Amazon, there, and there's other um, third party um, websites that provide this service as well. And there's even people who actually farm these things and sell them at a great rate. And if you use them a lot, like we will because we go fishing at work and we have the opportunity to go fishing almost every day or every day if you really plan your thing your uh, if you really plan it out can I go fishing every day yes I've done it it's awesome and sometimes I run out of bait or there's situations like cyanobacteria that shut everything down and then I realize I need a boat it's coming guys eventually keep saying it. It's coming. I swear. Uh, one last thing, which I haven't done, is ice fishing. What do you do during ice fishing when you want to catch a bluegill? What bluegill baits are good for ice fishing? There are really two things that I know work very well. Besides what I've already said, they could be used. They could work. But the ones... I've heard people use a lot are wax worms and mealworms and I guess grubs too if you could find some that aren't frozen. But those are a little more hardy, they last a little longer in the fridge attempts, and they're more natural and available to be found during those periods of time. Therefore the fish are skeptical when it comes down on a <laughs> your high wire trick <laughs> and fed to them. They're like, oh it's a waxworm. It's a millworm. It's time for a quick lunch. It's right there in front of me. It's easy. I'm gonna bite that. So that's my list of bluegill baits that you should use if you want to catch bluegill. And if there's anything else that you're wondering about, it's probably the fact that these could be used for other panfish as well. Yes, all other sunfish and anything that is in that same panfish family will eat all of these same baits. I don't think there's any of them that most won't eat. Maybe the bologna and the hot dog is going a little too far with some of them. Maybe a crappy won't eat that. But the others, the breams, the uh, pumpkin seeds, etc, etc, they, they'll eat the same things. So you should try them all out. And hey, while you're here and you're at it and you're looking at YouTube, go down below and subscribe to the channel. I'll be making new content almost every day, just like this. If you look back in the past, you know, do a little due diligence on me, make sure that I'm keep, I keep making content. If I'm not, I'm taking a long break, please comment below and tell me, hey Dwight, where's all that great content you were saying you, you were gonna provide us? Where is that, man? Are you taking a break? Are you on vacation? Are you tired of talking about fishing? No, I'm not tired. Not gonna be tired anytime soon. Check me in a year. I'm still going to be here. And while you do that, go to the website, fishnetwork.com, and you'll see a nice little link where you can get some nice freebies. One of them is a 10-step process to go fishing at work, and there's another one I'll be making soon about how to catch more bass, specifically largemouth bass, which I have the most experience with, but there's smallmouth bass near here, and you may have some other types of bass. And I know there's a lot of different bass people don't think are different bass. Spotted bass, there's a weird bass down in um, the Okeechobee in uh, Florida, the Swahani. Sw Swahani? 
it's it's a bass, and, and it, it acts almost the same way, just in a different environment, and we can learn about it together. And maybe sometime I'll get to go down there, and I'll definitely make a video if I go anywhere. Matter of fact, I'm gonna be in Florida, in in, um, hmm, in January, and I'm bringing my fishing rod. I'm gonna hit the sea, and I'll see if I can hit the fresh water as well. And I'll bring you along with my handy iPhone, and hopefully with a nice tripod, I can get attached to it, and you can watch me do my thing while I travel. So this is Dwight Norris, Fish Network, telling you to go use some bluegill baits to catch bluegill.